What is going on guys? My name is Tom Plex and today we're going to be talking about someone very special because I just finished the compendium of this. We're going to be talking about, you guessed by the title of the video, Spawn. Now Spawn is probably one of the most amazing characters created by Tom McFarlane and probably the most controversial. Well, I wouldn't really say controversial. Is controversial the right word? Future means saying this. Put it. Put the definition of controversial. Controver, controversial. <laughs> controversial right here. All right. Now, next thing. Now, not the next thing. What am I doing? I. I... <sighs> Okay, future me, just restart this. What, we just need to restart. Okay, so Spawn. Who is he? Where did he come from? What's he like? So, warning, this is... <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this is just gonna be sort of a, um... Okay, hats off, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm literally doing this ram. This is the first time doing this. Okay, bye. It's based on, so far, what I know through Spawn 1 through 50. So we're going to talk about his origin. Spawn is a man named, is a resurrected man from the dead named Al Simmons or Simons. And Al Simons was a mercenary for hire, hired by the government. And he was sort of, he crossed the line because of his compassion towards others and because of his social life, mainly his wife and the fact that he wanted to protect her at all costs. So he was killed by his partner who was a part of the sort of like superhuman program for the government. And later on, Al Simmons was resurrected by, at that time was supposedly known as the devil or the Maligolbia, I think it is. The Maligolbia. Yeah, that's basically the devil in the Spawn universe. <laughs> um, yes, so through that, so he made a deal because he didn't, because he didn't want to leave his wife a grieving widow. So he made a deal to be resurrected but at a cost that his whole body was resurrected to his form when he died, which is basically a burned body. And he was composed entirely of a material called psychoplasm, which is essentially a material that is mainly used by your mind to generate a form of living tissue or a form of actual or of actual matter called psychoplasm. It could be anything. It's called psychoplasm, mainly living things. That's what it's used for. But then he took on the suit of Spawn and and woke up back in New York City not knowing what the hell was happening, as I don't think any of us did. I mean, Superman definitely didn't when he beat up the Justice League. <laughs> so Spawn decided to try and find his wife. Um, he knew he had a wife, but he couldn't remember her name. Spoiler, her name is... Wanda, that's what it is. No, not Wanda Maximoff, although she's cool too. No, <laughs> it's fine. But he has a wife named Wanda and thinks like, I gotta be in a human form or like, I gotta be who I used to be. He tries thinking of a form and he thinks he's the one he used to be, but no, he, he actually transformed into basically this, into this sort of like really handsome dude. I don't know why, it's just, it's creepy. No, it looks like snake, it looks like snake eyes without the mask. At that which is kind of creepy. Uh, just minus the scars and the bulging eye. Anyway, but, but you can sort of see the resemblance, but he does not like this because like, this is not me. I'm not this guy. But he finally made, but he finally made his decision and he went to see his wife and realizes that, that she remarried because he's been gone. He thinks he's been gone like not a long while, but he's been gone for like five years. That probably had to have been hard, but Finally, he decides, he finds out that she's actually married to his old best friend, Terry, Terry Fitzgerald. And this causes him to pass out and wake up because it turns out like he can, he and his wife can never actually have children. So seeing this makes him feel a little jealous or upset. And at this time, like he decides to go live in the alleys and meet and make some friends named Billy, Bobby, and a bunch of other and a bunch of other people I don't need to mention, but eventually he, but eventually he learns to live with them as, but as, and is sort of their protector. There, he's sort of like that Moon Knight of the universe. He protects the travelers of the nights, 
But what I find so cool about that is like they all sort of see him as an equal and he sees them as family. And basically every time he's gone after a group of mobs, mainly mainly this guy named Vito, who's sort of have an Italian mob. When he finds out about him, hires overt kill. Say it quickly sounds like overkill. Overt kill. Kind of a bit overkill, don't you think? Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. It, Overt Kill is just this massive bang combined with a cyborg combine, combine, combine. <sighs> my brain is, my brain is killing me trying to remember this stuff. Combined with Bane and, but basically it's Bane combined with, with a cyborg, just big mess. But anyways, he goes through, he tries, he defeats over Kill, thinks he kills him, and ends up coming back, like, later in the series, probably, like, issue 30, I think. Issue 30 through 40, maybe, I don't know. I, it's been, I, I, it's been a little bit since I've read Spawn Compendium Volume 1. Um, but anyways, he has this sort of, like, grudge against this guy called The Violator, who is basically disguised as a sort of, like, big chubby clown with a shirt that says, I love New York. And it's just basically a real asshole. Later on, like near the end of the comics, he discovers that there's this sort of war that's supposed to happen between heaven and hell and tries to find and tries to get his friend back who's abducted by like angels and an, and an angelic satellite who made the sort of anti-spawn sort of. And they originally hired um, Al, Al Simmons' former partner, Jason Wynn, to become the anti-spawn and then they found like this really religious guy who was sort of like a who sort of like came clean after in prison and he became like this great guy um and sort of became this and sort of became the anti-spawn next after that i forgot what name he gave himself future me put it put what he named himself right here thank you um i don't know right here any anywhere you want anywhere you want if that's the way you need it any way you want it I don't know if anyone got that reference. Anyway, so you sort of have to realize that he has faced a lot of a-holes throughout this whole run, mainly trying to kill him because he's the hell spawn. And in heaven, they already have like these armies or, or angelic weapons, guns, all that jazz. Meanwhile, Malagoba, the, the, Mal, the Malagol, Malagolba, that's his name, has been trying to make the, make a whole army of, of hell spawns out of dead, horrible people in the eighth. In the eighth sphere of hell, which is basically like the hardest place to reach. And basically near the end, his friend Terry gets a tumor in his brain that's sort of been there his whole life, but sort of like a pneumonia that his wife had that got that got or a cold that his wife had that got into him that sort of became a pneumonia that sort of triggered the tumor in his head and um al went a lot of his energy into 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 his friend terry to get rid of the tumor and save his life after going into a coma and that's pretty much all i know of spawn, of spawn so far But anyways, that's just pretty much my, my breakdown of Spawn, or my sort of like breakdown of who he is, his allies, his enemies, that's just basically. And uh, I can't wait to read Spawn Compendium 2. Compendium? Compendium. Compendium.